hey guys, if you are listening to this, then you need a little help with DNA transcription and translation, which is just a fancy way of saying protein, making proteins. So DNA replication and making proteins. Let's start with the basics. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. A nucleotide is the building block of DNA. Nucleotide is a building block. It has three parts. It has a phosphate group, which is right here. It has a sugar, which is the deoxyribose sugar. And then it has a nitrogen containing base. So this is a base as adenine, thymine, guanine, or cytosine that has nitrogen in it. So we have phosphate, sugar, and base. And what you see here, it's kind of hard to really understand it, but this green thing here, that's the base. Then the backbone is made of the phosphate and sugar over and over and over again. And the bases line up here in the middle. The shape of DNA is a double helix. It's a twisted ladder where the backbone, like I just mentioned, are the sides of the ladder. That's sugar and phosphate over and over and over again. And then the center, the, the rungs or the steps of the ladder, that is the base. And the bases pair up. Um, the order of the bases is the genetic code. Every organism has its own unique genetic code. Now, we have our four bases in DNA. We have adenine and thymine. A pairs with T. Cytosine and guanine, C pairs with G. You don't have to know the names, you just have to know the letters. A and T, C and G. A and T, C and G. If you forget, it's apples and trees, cars in the garage, okay? Now, what I want you to do is, in a minute, I want you to take a minute and replicate this DNA strand. Remember that DNA replication is making an exact copy. So we're going to take this strand and replicate it. So to do that, we're going to do the opposite strand. So A pairs with T. That's going to be your first base pair letter that you're going to write. And then go ahead and do the whole sequence and make your DNA sequence. Okay, you should have typed in T. A, A, let me type it in for you, T, A, A, G, T, C, C, G, G, T, T, A, C, sorry, messed that one, last one up. I'm perfect in every way, but sometimes I mess up too. So this is DNA replication when you're matching those base pairs. Remember that this is still a double helix, but what it looks like here is just not twisted. It's a DNA strand that's just been flattened out, but this is so you can see how the nucleotides build together when it's not twisted. We have, remember, we have our phosphate, our sugar, and our nitrogen-containing base, our base. So A pairs with T, C pairs with G that never changes. They match together perfectly. You'll notice a couple of things. All of these red lines here, these bases are bonded with hydrogen bonds. Hydrogen bonds hold the bases together. And if you look on one side, this whole side of the DNA strand is upside down. This is known as anti-parallel. So we have bases that run um, the, the nucleotides run facing up this way and flipped upside down this way because they're held together by these hydrogen bonds. Now, if we allowed this to, to stretch out or twist back up, that's what this looks like, okay? We have the bases here held together by hydrogen bonds and this twisted ladder shape, the double helix. All right, if we're looking at the genetic code itself, the genetic code is three bases. This is known as a triple codon or a codon, okay? The genetic code codes for proteins, basically. Each codon equals one amino acid. 
Each codon equals one amino acid. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So you put one, two, three, three million amino acids together and those make different proteins. We get this information from DNA. The DNA gets made into mRNA, which we're gonna look at in a second. And then mRNA gets made into a protein. There are some very special codons. So remember, a codon is three letters, three base pairs together. We have special codons that say start making the protein, and we have special codons that say stop making the protein. The start codon is always AUG. The easiest way to remember that is that school starts in August. And we have three stop codons. All right, let's look at the difference between DNA versus RNA. DNA, we just talked about, is a double helix. It's two-stranded. It's how you would say thick. We have, I know, I'm so cool, I can't help it. Okay, we have the four, base, the four bases. We have thymine, cytosine, adenine, and guanine. Again, you don't have to know the names. You have to know T, C, A, and G. The opposite is true of RNA. RNA is just a single strand. It's very, very thin. This is going to be important for in a second, so hold tight. All of these three bases are the same. We have the same G, we have the same A, and we have the same C. Where it's different is uracil. There is no T in RNA. There's only U. Now, this is important because... RNA stands for ribonucleic acid, RNA. This is a messenger. RNA is a messenger between DNA and the rest of the cell. Now, in this nucleus right here, this is the cell's nucleus. Remember, in the nucleus, DNA has to stay there all the time. It can't leave. DNA is too fat to fit through these nuclear pores. RNA is small enough to slip right through. So DNA gets transcribed into mRNA. DNA gets made into mRNA through a process called transcription. Once the mRNA, the single-stranded RNA, is made, it can slip right out of the nuclear pores and travel down to a ribosome to be made into a protein. That's called translation. Stand by for that. Let's look at transcription. Transcription is DNA to RNA. We just learned about or relearned about DNA replication. DNA replication is just making a copy of DNA. Transcription is making DNA go to RNA. The same thing happens when you're doing DNA to RNA that you did when you did DNA to DNA the only difference is it's no longer A paired with T. Remember, there's no thymine in RNA. So it's now A pairs with U, which is uracil. There's no thymine. Everything else is the same, T to A, C to G, G to C. This side is RNA. This side is the DNA. It's DNA to RNA, okay? So there are three types of RNA. There's messenger RNA. This is what gets made in the nucleus, DNA to mRNA. And this carries that special code from the nucleus all the way out to the cytoplasm and the ribosomes where proteins get made. Then there's tRNA. That's transfer RNA. This carries uh, the amino acids so that we can string them together. And then ribosomal RNA. This helps join the mRNA and tRNA together. Um, think of ribosomes. This is the glue, essentially, for the ribosomes. So mRNA, that's messenger. Think of mRNA like the mailman. It carries the message. tRNA is transfer RNA. Think of transfer RNA like a taxi cab. It carries amino acids with it, like a passenger. And then ribosomal RNA, think of this like rubber glue or that's the old fashion term, fashion term for glue, rubber glue. This helps join together the mRNA and the tRNA so that nothing falls apart while proteins are being made. So let's look at transcription before we move on. Transcription, remember, is RNA to DNA.
this happens in a ribosome, or this happens in the nucleus. So once DNA is made into mRNA in the nucleus, it, this is how it happens. So I want you to take a minute and transcribe DNA to RNA. Remember, A pairs with T, T pairs with U, C pairs with G. So what you should have had for your transcription is U, A, A, G, U, C, C, G, G, U, U. You'll notice here that there are no T's. Remember, there are no T's in RNA. So any A pairs with U, T pairs with A, C with G, and G with C. So remember the whole point of transcription is to make RNA so that we can get to the final step, which is translation. Translation is RNA to protein. DNA gets made into RNA, mRNA, okay, in the nucleus. The RNA travels to the ribosome so that it can then make that information into proteins. Proteins are just really long chains of amino acids. This, each one of these little pearls on a string is an amino acid. When you string them together, that makes a protein. Remember that each codon, which is three bases, codes for one of these. So how many codons would you need to have in order to make this chain of six amino acids? How many, how many three base pairs? Now, if you have a total of three, six, nine, 12, 15, so we have six codons, how many bases are they? So remember, there are three bases in every codon. So how many bases would you need to make this protein? Let's look at how translation works. First, we have our DNA in the nucleus of a cell. DNA gets transcribed to RNA, which you just did. It's a single strand, and A pairs with U. RNA is small enough to slip right out of that nucleus and travel down to the ribosome. Translation is where it works with the other types of RNA to build a protein. That's this little black thing here. So we have mRNA, that's that long chain that was made in the nucleus. We have tRNA, that's this thing that almost looks like a T. And then our RNA is found inside this ribosome here. This is a ribosome. And they all three of those work together to build this chain. Don't forget that tRNA and rRNA finally have a job. We're now in translation. They kind of wait for transcription to happen, where mRNA gets made and then comes down to the ribosome, that's when transfer RNA that carries amino acids and ribosomal RNA kick in. Now, remember that translation is RNA to a protein. This happens in the cytoplasm by the ribosome. It has these players. We have mRNA, which carries the codons, tRNA, which carries the amino acids and the anticodons. We have the ribosomes and the rRNA, which is kind of the glue. And lastly, we make the amino acids string together. So step one, the ribosome attaches to the mRNA, just like this. Step two, the amino acid is carried on top of the tRNA with the anticodon. You'll see that A and U, U and A, C and G, they're opposite of each other. So it's carrying the correct anticodon. And then they just kind of keep moving along and attaching these proteins together. What we're left with is a chain of amino acids that makes a protein. The steps are pretty simple. You need to take that mRNA and basically make, using this codon chart, make a protein. What amino acid is made by codon AUG? You use A, U, and G, that's methionine, the start codon. 
Now I want you to translate each of these. Great job, everybody.